Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Reid and I'm a naturopathic doctor and this is a video about ozone therapy and how it can be helpful with low immunity. This video was inspired by a question or it's a, it's a video in response to a question that someone had posted on one of my videos. Just a uh, comment was, can you talk about how ozone has an impact on uh, individuals dealing with low immunity? And how happily do that. I could talk about ozone all day. So uh, individuals with low immunity, I mean, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a general question. Um, if the person who asked the question has more nuanced questions based on what I'm saying here, I'm, I'm happy to address that, I'm sure. Um, but basically, if someone has low immunity, then I guess there'd be sort of two versions of that question that would make the most sense to me. So one would be someone who's getting a lot of colds and flus. Uh, so it's cold flu season, they're coming down with, you know, every cold or flu that comes along um, and or it takes them a long time to get better. So rather than just, you know, two or three days and you're pretty much over the cold or flu and you're, you're back to the races uh, or back in the saddle, whatever the euphemism is that one might want to use, um, then uh, in, in a and then other folks, you know, taking a lot longer to get all the way better. So in that case, ozone could be helpful because um, intravenous ozone therapy can be very helpful to um, help eradicate the virus that is causing that infection. Um, it's also something that can be used intra uh, intranasally, um, if the ozone, ozone is percolated through olive oil, um, doing an, a sinus inhalation or a nasal inhalation of um, um, what would be called ozonides can be quite helpful. It can help to reduce inflammation in the sinuses, can also help to uh, kill off microbes that might be um, growing in the sinuses as well, so or, uh, kill off viruses that have colonized the sinuses or the um, oronasopharynx. So in that kind of case, the intravenous ozone and ozone inhalation, not direct gas, that would be bad for the lungs and not, not a good choice, but ozone that's been percolated through oil to create an ozonide byproduct, that could be helpful in that case of low immunity. Um, if the question was intended more uh, from the perspective of folks who are dealing with a lot of chronic infections, so they're dealing with chronic viral infections, they might have issues with um, you know, persistent borreliosis, or also known as a chronic Lyme disease, or different co-infections, or also folks who are dealing with mold illness, um, bearing in mind that a lot of mold mycotoxins are strongly, some of them very strongly immunosuppressive. Uh, one of them, which is called mycophenolic acid, is actually a pharmaceutical um, immunosuppressant medication that, like, it's, it's a uh, they isolated it, I guess, from mold and, and found this mycophenolate and then use it as an immunosuppressive drug and um, in different types of autoimmune conditions. And I think maybe even for like anti-organ uh, rejection and transplants patients. So it's really quite strong. Um, so in folks who are dealing with these uh, types of chronic infections, mold illness, um, uh, viral infections, things like that, then those folks will sometimes um, identify as saying like, oh, I've got impaired immunities, I've got all these microbes running around. Um, the reality of it is that it's, it, uh, to my understanding at least, it's quite a bit more nuanced than that for a lot of folks, because it's not necessarily that you have low immunity, it's more that you have a discombobulated immune system. And by discombobulated immune system, I mean that there's sort of this derangement that's occurred of the immune system that's actually triggered by some of these chronic infectious microbes. Um, so they're able to influence the immune system in such a way that the immune system goes uh, from being in an attack mode, seeing like, oh, there's a virus, there's a bacteria, there's an infected cell or whatnot, let's go kill that causal microbe, to more of a pro-inflammatory state. So kind of going into more of a TH2 dominant state versus a TH1 dominant state. When the immune system's in more of a TH2 dominant state, as encouraged by these microbes, then it creates a lot of inflammation and doesn't really lead to a lot of killing. So it's kind of like you're getting the worst of both worlds. Your immune system is making you feel rough and symptomatic, but it's not actually getting rid of the infection. So in a case like that, these folks who are dealing with, say, a, a low immune system or this dysregulated immune system, um, ozone therapy can be really, really helpful in some of those cases um, because ozone therapy, when it's administered intravenously, it has this immunomodulating property to it. It helps to balance out the immune system. And by doing that, it can help to encourage that Th2 dominance, Th1 um, insufficiency to start getting back into more of a balanced state. So there's less inflammation, less hypersensitivity type symptoms, and then basically just more 
killing action on the part of the uh, of the immune system. Um, IV ozone therapy does lots of other things as well, but that kind of immune system balancing effect to give the patient the best of both worlds would be um, a, a way that ozone therapy could be helpful for folks who are dealing with um, low immunity or, or, as I like to say, discombobulated immunity, because who doesn't like saying discombobulated? So I hope that that answered the question. Um, if it didn't, as I said, just let me know. Um, if there's any other questions, fire away. I am happy to yap about most things related to uh, medicine, naturopathic medicine, integrative medicine, chronic illness, what have you.